It's a nine fight win streak in all. Perfect 6-0 in the octagon. Oh, I want a title shot next. Uh, I want the winner of Valentina versus Grosso. Aaron Cole Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. I should have made we're out of here. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. And that's how we begin with my, uh, I say in air quotes, my friend insulting the fact that I'm not particularly tan. What are you saying? I just, Jimmy, I would know, know why I said what I said. Yes. Because it was fresh in my head. I just watch, I just watched with my kids, because they're old enough now, Blade with Wesley Snipes. We watched the, the, um, the beginning of it. Do you know I've never seen that? Oh, I love it. But they I know. It's a classic. I've never seen it. Oh, you've never seen it? No, 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 no. You have to see it. Are you out of your Bird, no pun intended. Sorry, I've never seen it. Jimmy, can I put the sword away? I love you. I miss you. I'm coming. I miss in you fly. too. Are you are. I'm very sore today. I, 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 I was away. I was away, so I didn't train for like a little over a week, and I went back today to make sure I didn't let myself go. And my neck is very. I'm very sore from being oh, tossed around. Well, can I just start off by saying hi, sore? I'm Zeus. Uh so Jimmy, we have Erin. Hold on. Yes, we do. Okay. I am a dad. All right, I got to yep. throw a couple of dads Tom Aspinall dad. was supposed to be on, but I think he anticipated that joke and canceled in advance. <laughs> I have to I have to remind you how funny you are by being, you know, not funny. Jimmy, I didn't talk to you in a hot minute like the kids said. I know. You know what I'm saying? Let's uh let's catch up because there's a lot to catch up on. Did I even talk to you since uh my team competed the other day, including my daughter? No, I haven't talked to you probably since uh the Wednesday before I went I we went on vacation. I went I went on vacation. Well, this is the thing. What a good day. Oh yeah. Yeah, uh, my firstborn, she got she, you know, she competed. My my other daughter was gonna compete, but uh she um she had a hurt foot right oh. so so my daughter competed in her division and then upper division upper belt to, to orange belt she's a great belt and she got double gold man she did wow great. No, oh, no, that's she's awesome i mean she loves it and uh it's funny like this this other jujitsu um uh tournament that she did in, in uh, fordham university in the bronx that she won uh they got in contact with us and they uh you know they have they have, they have i don't know what kind of Funds they have, but they they have a very they're a very event. So when Angelina competed that one, they did a video of her. I swear, I swear, it looks like it was shot by uh, uh Steven Spielberg or something. It was really like the way it was done to music. Yeah. They contacted me and they asked if uh you know Angelina wants to like teach a move and, and explain it and and demonstrate it for their for their uh, social media and that kind of thing. So we did that. We shot that. So that should be out soon. Oh, and that's again, great. My kid's fourteen. She's very personable. And uh, it's just cool. It's just cool watching her. The other day she texted she texted me, Jimmy, and we were just talking about the tournament a little bit. And she goes, Dad, I love it. I love it. I can't even explain to you how much I love it. That's great. Isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really right. awesome. Um, it's the- such a good thing. It's such a good thing to fall in love with because it's only going to make you more secure. It's going to make you stronger. Again, and being able to defend yourself in real life. I mean, there's nothing more valuable than that, I don't think. Dude, dude, hashtag family business. Family yeah. business, Jimmy. Listen, you never know, Jimmy. Well, you might have a kid, and all of a sudden that kid gets into comedy. What would you say? Um, I would say you're not mine. You're absolutely not mine. <laughs> there's no way I'm having a kid by mistake. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> well, that's not what I was looking for. But, Jimmy, yeah, I want to talk. Well, first of all, we got a little bit of time. Before, sure. Everyone, yeah. Uh, I want to talk to you more about that tournament really quick, and then we'll talk about everything. Unless like, you sure. want to talk about you first, let's catch up with you. Not about there's my. Not, there's not much to catch up with me. I, I literally, I didn't do that much. I was just very relaxed uh, over over the vacation. Um, 
I didn't do much. I don't have much to report, to be very honest. I'm just happy and I feel good. And I ate like a fat pig and I'm back on my diet. There we go. Well, you're a little piggy sometimes, but you I lose, you don't look like a piggy. You could be a little, I could be a little piggy, but my stomach kind of keeps me in check. You know what yeah, I mean? but I, I fattened up and uh, I felt it today training. Oh my God. Look at those rock hard abs. I'm glad you did that. I was going to ask you to. Um, <laughs> Excuse me. Jimmy. Yes. Um, it's funny. You How's know, Longo, by the way? How's Longo? Longo's great. I'm sorry. Longo got a new hip. I literally just spoke to him. We were talking about Aaron Blanchfield, and I'll tell you, myself and Ray Longo both think that she's going to be champion. I mean, yeah. I don't, I'm not being like some Notre Dame with that because I think I'm not alone in that because I think her fight over the, the last week, last weekend, and we'll get more into this when she gets on here. I think that shows how she can deal with adversity. And yeah. little value, the first round was a little very close. Yeah, and they got, you know, she's just persistent. Yeah. I can't. I'm so happy that she she's coming on today. Yeah, you know, me too. For people that don't know, did we say that it's Labor Day? Do we know? Do we know uh, today's that? Labor Day. Yeah, yeah. But people will hear it tomorrow and assume we, we, it is. Yeah. And knowing the whole country is off today, um, but I and then and and uh, the, the the academy is closed. But there's a few people doing private, so I was able to go. I, I almost said no, but I'm like, hey, you got to go, fat boy. Oh, you, wait go, a fat boy. That's how I talk to myself. Wait a minute. So you you train? To, you do that when you're in the mirror? You talk to yourself like that? I, I do, and, and even when I'm just whispering to myself and I'm not looking at myself because I know who I mean, I'll just say to myself, I'll be alone in the house. I'm you like, go train, you fat boy. You don't have to look in the mirror. You can just No, say, I know who I mean. I mean, there's no one else here. <laughs> wait, no, wait, back to what I was talking about. Sure. Oh, what the fuck was I talking about besides Erin? Uh, you were talking about how you're happy she's coming on today. You think she's yes. going to be champion? Yes, you're talking about I do. The, the, yeah, I do too. I well, like, I mean, Shevchenko like Grasso too has to happen first. Well, but. listen, how about this? And that's what I was talking about with Longo. Grasso or or um, uh, Shevchenko. The great Shevchenko, uh, Valentina. I feel that she matches. And I love, and first of all, I'm a fan of both those girls. Of course. I, but I do. If they were to, each one of them were to fight, and I don't mean any disrespect because I know Valentina has done a ton. Yeah, she's fought everyone. But the way, but it's one of those things where they could be competitive in certain areas, but if there's one area that just trumps the other area and there's just different levels, I think that area is the ground for Erin Blanche. Yeah. So even if she doesn't have to beat Valentina standing up, she has to be able to survive and just fight her way into something to a takedown. And I think it could be, it, it, you know, I, I'm telling you, I, I think the girl's a future champion. I do. Yeah. I, really do. I, I look at the, she's answering the call, man. Look at the, look at her track record of who she's fighting. You know, I know. And Manon, uh, uh, Manon Fury, Fury, I, I always have a hard time with, with what's silent in her name. Uh, very impressive fight against Rose, who obviously had an injury um, and, and fought through it. Um, very yeah. tough uh, Rose look, but still a, a great win for uh, uh, for O. Madden, Manon for Manon? for I, I I took two years of French, and I still I still know nothing about it. How do you pronounce the first name though, Madden? I think Manon. it's Manon, Manon? Furio or Manon. Yeah, I, I just I can never say it. You hear different announcers say it differently, and I'm not the guy to ask. Well. Well, listen, you got it. When did Rose hurt her finger? Because that was grotesque. It when looked like happen? in the first. It looked At, like in the first round. First yeah. round. Right, listen, hey, first of all, I don't want to take away from uh, Manon's. Uh, of course. Because she did look awesome. She looked yep. awesome. And it might have been the same result without that finger injury. Sure. Or it might not have. You got to give a lot of respect. I mean, how much respect? There's a, look, look at Rose, man. I mean, how do you, you fight through that? Yeah. She must be like, oh, pull this fucking finger. It looked, it looked like a question mark. Yeah. Her, her finger looked like Marab's nose. <laughs> no, fucking, it looked like Marab don't give a fuck. No. Uh, Marab's shadow boxing in the fucking rain. He don't care. Jumping into frozen lakes. I love Marab. Anyway, um, I, I, got it. I give Rose just, she is a thug. She is. Yeah, oh, she by is. Way, just since we're, we're talking about the card a little bit here. Yep. What about this freaking tough Frenchie? Uh, be no uh, Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Saint Denis, Saint Denis. Yes. Oh, what? Saint what? Uh, Saint Denis. Saint Denis. Oh, yeah. listen. I don't know how to. What S's you don't say? What? Sometimes ben, you do. Oh, yeah, sometimes you don't. Yeah, Saint Denis. Sometimes you say him. Sometimes you don't. I mean, I, again, it's all French. I don't know it. Uh, yeah. Tiago Moises. What a great. 
Uh, great fight that was. That ref gave uh, Moises more than enough time to defend himself, too, in that second round. Say his, say his first name again, though. Uh, Benoit saint Denis. Again. Benoit saint Denis. Uh, Benoit. I like yeah. that. Sounds yeah. so cool. Anyway, but uh, he was in, like, the, the what was he, in the French Special Forces or some yeah, shit? Yeah, I believe so, yeah. But what a badass, because I'll tell you right now, Thiago Moises was, he was, when he, his best, that first round was something. Yeah. That was something. And uh, that cup kick, by the I love when fans boo when like he kicked him in the dick. I mean, and it, it was, I've never seen a better kick anywhere by anyone square in the cup. And Moises is just taking a minute and people start booing. And it's like, Jesus Christ, MMA fans are rough. Like a guy gets kicked in the dick and you don't want to give him a minute I, and a half, I, two I, minutes I, to I, recover. They were up there with the Brazilians as far as the home team. You know, what I mean? I've never heard a louder stadium. I've no, never heard a louder stadium. No, than that. When they were chanting and, and jumping up and down, yeah. Uh, but Michael Bisping, the great Michael Bisping, uh, former champion, he was saying he wanted to find out what they were saying, and I'm glad yes. he did. He was trying to know, and it was saying basically, if you're not jumping up, and it's not as it's not as hardcore as the Brazilians. That basically right, right. Decapitate you or something? Uh, they say something crazy. Uh, what do they say? You're gonna die or something? What is it? Yeah, I forget how it goes. <laughs> but I, something like that. But it's yeah. very, it's very violent. But anyway, the French, it's very, it's very um, catchy, and they're all jumping up and down. So they base, they were saying, we found out, if you're not jumping, you're not French. I mean, that's not really a nasty. It's actually the yeah. softest kind of chant. I mean, I've never heard a worse chant than that. If you're I not having fun, we're not having fun. Fucking boo! boo. That chant boo. sucks. Whoever, I don't know how long ago, whoever made that thing up, whatever French guy was sipping his wine going, oh, I understand. Listen, if you do not jump, you are not afraid. Yeah, that's a shit anyway, chant. I'm going to switch it around. I'm going to say, yeah. Yay, yeah. Cyril God. See how I switch it? He looked great. great. Cyril God looked great. Yeah. You know what the saddest part about that, though? Why? He, what's sad about this? Is he fight? If he, he looks so great. That if he didn't fight John Jones yet, you'd be like, I have to yeah, see that fight. That's right. Guess what? Guess what? They fight again. I feel the same shit's going to happen. I think John Jones is going to. Yeah. And you know what I do like, though? I will say this. I do like that he fought off Spivak's takedown. More yes, he once. did. One yeah. time he had his leg up in the air and he did like a jump and he did a sprawl. It was good. But can I say something? Yo, Spivak. What was I looking at, though? I mean, I understand. I mean, he was, it looked like he was mentally out of it from a first couple of strikes. He did not look like a guy that was determined, right. determined to do anything, but, but not win. He did not look surprised when it got called off. He looked like, fuck this, get me out of here. I'm having a horrible day. He, yeah, he was really like just kind of covering up. And I, I wonder, has he fought anybody who moves like on? Maybe when you fight somebody who moves that well at a heavyweight, you, you've just never seen it before and it just fucks you up. I don't know. I know what you mean. Do you ever just hear a lyric from like an Ozzy song and just be like, I love that lyric. It's a, yes, man. Ozzy has this great song. He's like, if you're not jumping up and down, you're not French. <laughs> Is there? Is there a lyric? Um, yeah. Sing it. And you can do I, this when you do it. Na, 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 na. No, I won't do that. Oh, you don't do that? What do you no. do? What do the Aussie guys do? Like, we, we do this. You put your hand no, you, you put no, your you hand don't. gently. Yes, you do. You put your hand gently, your head gently between your two hands like a little praying mantis. No, you don't. Yes, yes, you rock out. Well, praying mantis? What do you... All right. All right, fine. I'll just sing my lyric. You okay. I'm trying to get to that. Sure. Anyway. A gentleman by the name Little Little Wayne. It's so much fun. He's on us. I keep... Don't get ready. Stop. Get your hand away from the thing. Don't be. Don't. Don't leave. I'm oh, not even thinking. Jesus, you have a goblet. I got my 7-Eleven coffee, pumpkin spice. Yes, man. Um, oh. it goes like this. It goes like this. It's just so catchy because I've been giving a lot of credit to Machine Gun Kelly about that his song A, and it's fun, and the lyrics are nice. They 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 they're, they're fun, but Little Wayne is he kills it when he's in there. You know. Yeah. You want to hear it? Okay. When I'm this high, when I'm this high, put them back on. I could look in the mirror. Who is this guy? 
Dean Thomas says I sing rap lyrics like Broadway. You do. Yeah. So, Jimmy, listen. Yes, so sir. I had the tournament the other day, the Naga, uh, on Long Island. Uh, you know, I told you about my daughter. She did great. Yeah. But not only that, the whole team. We got, we actually, on my Instagram, you can see it. My firstborn's on there with me. They sent us, Naga, they sent us the um, team, a, a huge belt. Because Sarah BJJ Academy in Huntington, Long Island, got the, the most wins out of the teams. Out of That's all the great. Teams. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's nice. Young kid Tommy De Janeiro, what a nice kid! He he's teaching for me now. He does. He's a he's a wrestler, blue belt, and jiu jitsu. He's fighting also. He's fighting next month with Marcus and my wife. My wife's having another kickboxing match next month. Jesus, the whole Sarah family. Out. You should fucking come out, man. I would love to. It's in October. It's like it's like another. Uh, Where is it? It's in Westbury. It's at the Space Theater in Westbury. What day is it? Saturday. I th- I believe it's a. Saturday, okay. but I'm not sure. The 15th, I believe. It's a Saturday, I think. But anyway, that kid went to the absolute division. He's going versus Giants, and he won that shit. He might have got us that team belt. My black belt slim, my black belt Tony. Guys were slaying it, man. Spano, what a good time. But listen, so listen, this is what I'm getting at. So Uncle Edwin, I, he's my kid's Uncle Edwin. You know Edwin. Yeah, my my sure. brother-in-law. He's one of he's one of my closest friends at this point, Edwin. We you know why? Because not only do we hang out at my school. He's coming over today with my in-laws, my sister-in-law. We we, we just uh, what was it? Saturday night? Yeah, we were at my my cousin Frankie's, uh, my wife's cousin Frankie Zago's fortieth birthday party. We hang out a lot, man. Yeah, we squad up in VR. Fuck, you serious? Yeah, I'm sure. Kamura Savage. He's Doc Kamura. It's great. But listen, so and he's very good in jiu-jitsu, right? He competed in that other open weight division. It was just. Killing people, including a judo guy. So listen to this, Jimmy. This is so funny. Um, so we're out there. So he went into the open weight division, Edwin. So people don't know Edwin. He's, like a, he's a 300-pound black gentleman. Now, leave that in because I want you to have the visual. He's a giant of a man. Yes. Okay? Strong gentleman. Fights MMA. He gets on top of my black belts. They better watch their arms. He'll rip a Kimura off. I don't care what belt you want. Yeah. He jumps in the open weight division, right? See, now the thing is this. When you go in there, you see pretty much the lineup, right? So, Jimmy, he goes out there on the mat. Now, there's a guy, I'm going to say, up to his chest. Maybe a little taller than me. Don't laugh at that. A little taller than me, maybe around under 200 pounds. And he's taller than you, and he's up to Edwin's chest. How tall is Edwin? He's like 5'6". I don't want to tell my story now. Come on. You're mean. You're, mean. You're a I nasty, want... mean little fucking bird. I want to hear I'm sorry. Story. All right. Go tell the rest of it. No, he, no. <laughs> he's, he's very tall. All right? So anyway, he was, this other guy was up to his chest, up to his chin, maybe. You're a son of, you're a, son of a bitch. But anyway, he was fine. I'm exaggerating. Up to his chin. He was a lot smaller. Yeah. So then he gets on the man. He looks at him. And you see a point with his head sideways, literally, like this. Like, what are, you, what are we doing here? Like, like what? And the guy was wearing a white belt, right? So now this is the deal. This is gonna be this is gonna be a story for you now, for everybody that goes out there. How we should never in combat. Sure. I'm doing this. What I'm doing? Two hand yeah. it, 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 Look what I'm doing now with the sword. Yep. This is not. Is that a sword or is that wishful thinking? Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> I was lowering my sword. Oh, I see. Okay. You never, Jimmy, you never lower your sword. You no. So he gets a hold of this guy. They both lock up, right? And Edwin, this is the Edwin is so goddamn strong. I'm not even exaggerating. He's the type of guy that he'll do something, he do something wrong and just break something. Like he's, you need a refrigerator moved. You yeah. don't need two guys. Call, call it. Like the guy's a, a monster. Powerful right? guy. Yeah. Powerful gentleman, right? So he locks hold of this guy, and I see him jerk him forward. And this, and then more, two, three times. It got to the point where he broke his posture, but now this guy is actually looking between his legs, and he's got his legs underneath him still. I knew at that point, all right, dude, this guy's a judo player. But this guy is a black belt in judo. I will bet my life on it, right? 
But now I'm not going to start yelling at the fuck. He's a judo guy. I mean, listen, he's in it. So then Edwin went to just give him a tiny bit of a push. He hit my favorite fucking judo throw, the drop Sayanagi. Now, dude. How does that go? You, now, you can either go to both knees. He went to both knees. I go to one leg to let me, like I step across. But picture, we're locked up. I got your chest and your tricep. You got each other the same way. I step across with my one foot, and I jump to both knees between your legs, and I pull you forward. So you're going right over the guys. So Edwin's trying to – he starts getting thrown. It almost looks like it's in slow motion where he goes to get his, his guy's back, but he gets taken over his top. <laughs> So it was like timber. Yeah. Then he couldn't recover. So he ended up losing to this fucking guy. And he was fucking, he wasn't, he didn't show he was pissed. He was just, it was just the guy. And then, you know, afterward, the guys, they come up to you. You know, they, they shake the hand of the coach, then each coach. So when the guy came up to me, they go, hey, I go, my man, very like, what, what belt are you in judo? He goes, oh, and like a Yugoslavian accent, he's like black belt or something. Like, oh, okay. So wait, so, why did he have a white belt on? Was he bullshitting to try to make himself now, look? I don't listen in Naga. I, that, maybe he's a, maybe he's doing that because he's a white belt in jujitsu, but it could definitely be sandbagging because you're like, wait a minute, but this is the expert division, so you know maybe a wrestler can go in there with, you know, I mean, uh, you know, with a, a white belt on or something, or you know, I don't know how that works, you know. But Edwin told me later that he goes, I was confused because it wasn't the size of the guy. It was, I didn't see him in the bracket. That's why I was like, what's going on? I'm not sure. I'm being honest. Maybe that's true. Or maybe he's looking at this guy half the size of him being, what the fuck am I looking at here? Right. And it's just one of those things where I think he just got caught with a little with his, uh, with his guard down. So then he has another match with a big purple belt. And he, he, and he, he made a, all right, Edwin, totally redeemed yourself. He got him in a bread cutter that almost popped the guy's head off. So like, now you feel better, right? Hey, listen, Jimmy. And I told this to Crone Gracie back in when he lost that fight. When you lose a match, best, the quickest way to get over it is to win a match. Right. It's, it is. Whether my GSP fight or the one I lost when I, I had to redeem myself in my mind, and I and I had, to, I had to fight a couple of wrestlers, and I you know what I mean because I, I I lost but whatever you feel it, it makes it, it makes you sleep well at night yeah it, you know what I mean anyway so he ended up redeeming himself and it's all good how but, did he uh, lose what did the guy do what how did, how did, how did he lose I don't want to he he just lost my points in that one oh. he lost my, he basically lost on the takedown you know <laughs> because again judo play is not only the good at throws they're good at pinning so because he has the grips on him it's hard for him to get back up. And now you're now you now you're no longer fighting this guy, you're fighting the clock. <laughs> it's like oh shit, man! If I don't do something in the next, and they know that, so that's why in in these jujitsu in these tournaments, in these jujitsu tournaments, when there's points involved, if you get scored on early, you better be able to bring it and get those points back or submit them because now you're no longer fighting that person. You're fighting the clock. Fighting the clock. That yeah. makes sense. And Erin yeah. is in the waiting room. Wow. Erin, let's bring her in. Let's just clap. Can we clap for Aaron Blanchfield, please? <laughs> hey. Hi, Aaron. I didn't even see that you came in. Hello. Yeah, hi. What's up? Aaron, thanks for, for hanging out with us a little bit today. We know it's a holiday. We know everybody's out barbecuing. You're giving us a little bit of time. We do appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Are you back, are you back home? Where are you now? Yeah, yeah, I'm back home in Jersey. The you never left, huh? You never left Jersey. Uh, yeah, I was, well, I was out, I was out in Singapore for like two weeks. Um, but I've been back in Jersey since, uh, since like last Monday I got back. No, oh no, no. I mean like, like full-time living, like, like, cause oh, I grew up yeah. in Jersey. I, I finally left when I was 30, but I, I lived in Jersey most of my life. Jersey boy. Yeah. Yeah. No, I've, yeah. I've lived in, lived in Jersey my whole life. <laughs> you started training when you were seven. What got you into it? Like, did you just decide you wanted to, did you see something on television or was it your parents or did somebody who, who kind of got you to do that? Yeah, it was actually on my mom. She wanted, um. She wanted my brother to start training, my younger brother. Um, so she put him in to, uh, it was Tiger Shulman's at the time, and he started training. And, and I just quit dance at the time. Um, and I went to go watch him train. And uh, yeah, then I, I they offered me like an introductory class. And I just like 
took loved it from there. Wow. How yeah. old were you, were you? How long did you do dance? And how old were you? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, I was. I think my mom put me in when I was like three, and I I did it till I was like six, seven, um, and then I started training when I was seven. You know why this makes me happy, Jimmy? Yes. My daughter, my my daughters. I have three daughters. I told you this before, Erin, probably. But um, yeah. my oldest is fourteen. She's been doing dance the same thing since three. She just yeah. walked away to pursue this. Right. She's loving. Oh she's yeah. So I'm like, I, when I once we get done with this, I'm going downstairs and telling her. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Aaron, I was talking to Ray Longo this morning. Mm -hmm. Ray could not say enough good things about you. I did not know a while back that you'd come down and you were working with Mizuki, um, Mm -hmm. the Japanese fighter that we had a while ago, right? Yeah, yeah. Wild. Wild. It was a while because Mizuki started coming to. uh, Henzo's uh, yes. like this was a while ago. It's like twenty, probably like before like, like COVID and everything. Um, so we trained a lot together then. And then like when COVID happened, I would go up to to Ray School and, and train with her there. Yeah, he's super cool. Ray would just say, Matt, you know, you'd love her. Just blue collar, quiet comes in with the with the the coaches quiet. They're nice. They're respectful. They come in to get their work. He goes, I seen the the the, the I know what he said. Not the improvement, like the evolution of how where, how the improvement. From when she just was coming down then to even now, and he believes that you're going to be next champion, and I do too. Not to like, not to just throw too much at you, Aaron. I yeah. mean, shoot. I mean, I know you feel that, Jimmy. Yeah. We might we're talking to the next champ. That's how I feel. Because Shevchenko you- and Grasso. Sorry, let me just. Yeah, sure, sure. I like the way you match up with either one of them, and I hold them both in high regard. I like the way you match up with Grasso. And I think I, especially after your last fight with uh, um, uh, what that, what, um, what, what was the name? Ty Santos. Yes, I'm sorry. I was getting confused with Man on the report the other day. Um, your fight with uh, that showed you that you could deal with a, a high level aggressive stand up, and, and then yeah. still persevere. So with, with Shevchenko, I feel if it gets to the floor, it's a, a legit, a legit problem for her. Okay, I'm done ranting. Go ahead, guys. What did, what did you think of uh, uh, throw against uh, Rose? Even though Rose was hurt, that was a really, really interesting fight. And um, what did you think of it? And how much do you, th- do you think Rose would have had, obviously had a better shot if she wasn't hurt, but do you think the result yeah. might have still been the same or do you think that it could have been completely different? Yeah, before that fight even happened, I thought Manon was going to win. Uh, honestly, I thought she was going to maybe do a little bit more. Uh, Rose did give her a good fight and she did break her finger pretty bad in the first, which is obviously going to affect the rest of the fight. Sure. Um, yeah, but I, I had a, I had a feeling Manone was going to win cause she's just, she's a bigger fighter. She's a natural 25 er and she's a big 25 er She's a little taller, a little lankier. Um, and you know, Rose is having a hard time getting those takedowns and I knew she would probably have to take her down to win. Like I didn't think she was going to win a striking match with her. Um, so kind of, it wasn't how I expected. When you're uh, in the I, off season, Aaron. Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. Did I cut you off? No, no, go ahead, buddy. When you're in the off season, how do you divvy up your time? Uh, as far as with the training, with the improvements of, do you still spend just as much time doing your jujitsu? And I mean, because I know we got to work on all areas. I mean, are you mm-hmm. just are you kind of a lot on the stand up? Uh, how does it? How does the? How does the like a a a week go in the off season? Are yeah. You know, um... I feel like I try to focus on whatever I needed to improve from my last fight. Um, like right now, like my nose and stuff is still healing up. So I've been just kind of working like my boxing, um, trying to get my hands back quicker. Um, like little, like some, yeah, little improvements that I felt like I needed to to do from my last fight. Um, and, but I feel, I still work everything. Like even like my strength coach and jiu-jitsu coach, they know each other well. Like they'll come back and forth to each other's gyms. Um, so I, I still, I still work on everything. Um, and just focus more on like whatever I feel like I need to improve on. Now, when you when you were in Singapore, did you stay? How long you stayed for two weeks after your fight? No, no, I, I oh. went out like two weeks early, so I left. So I fought the twenty sixth, but I left like the twelfth to go out there. Did you stay at all after? Because I mean, when you get ready for a fight, it's kind of hard to go out and enjoy the country. Do you stay at all after and just kind of relax? Uh, no, nah, I ended up. I left uh, Sunday like night, so I had like all day Sunday to like take it in. Uh, but even like the first week I was there, I was able to do like some sightseeing and stuff. Like I would train, uh, obviously that was like the main priority. Um, but then after training, you still have all day. So, uh, so I did some sightseeing then. Did you like it? 
And it, it was nice. It, it was a pretty country. There was definitely a lot of, I never been to Singapore before and I haven't been to like Asia in general at all. Uh, so it was cool seeing everything. How's that flight? Is that, how long is that? Like 17 that hours, was, right? Oh, it's longer. Cause it was like, I flew from here to Germany, which was like seven, eight hours. And then Germany did it there. That was like 12 hours. So it was like 20 hours on a plane. Oh, oh and how, yeah. you know, lay over in Germany, you just sit in the airport for two hours or whatever. Right. Yeah, actually, thank, thank God the, the layover wasn't long. It was like only like an hour. So basically got off, we get like water or something and then get back on the plane. Um, but yes, yeah, it was a long flight. How's the uh, how's the jet lag with that? How'd you get how'd you get now when you land with that? I don't know what time you landed. Is, is it morning or night? Is it if it is morning? Because I've been to Japan before. I remember that was just you have to it was brutal. Like you have to try to either stay awake to get on the schedule or but it's hard to. How was it? How was when you getting adjusted? Um, so when we landed, so we left here August 12th. So like a Saturday, we didn't get with the time difference and everything. Cause we left Saturday night. We didn't get there till like August 14th, like there Monday. So it was like two days past already. Um, and we got there at like 7am. Um, so we basically just tried to stay awake the rest of that day to try to adjust. Um, and I think we, I've ended up falling asleep around like nine or so, but that first week was pretty rough. I kept waking up at like three or four a.m. like completely like wired like not able to sleep um so i think like one day like that wednesday or thursday or something i just woke up at like 3 a.m and i just like forced myself to stay awake so i'd finally be like tired enough to like sleep through the night um but I, by the time fight week came around i was completely adjusted because i was already there for like a week that's awesome i mean i used to yeah. go early i used to go early to vegas i felt the difference between here uh new york and uh in Vegas, I would, I, my yeah. first training session always, I'd be like, yo, I'm not, I don't feel in shape. I get winded. And that's only, I mean, I can only, I don't know the difference between here and, and, uh, Singapore. Singapore. You know what I always find weird? And I guess like when they book fights in like Colorado and places with that really high uh, altitude, cause then all the fights, everybody's gassing out. It looks all, you know, right. Yeah. Little, some of those cards, it's like, notorious where i mean one time in mexico city we had we had, we had kane velasquez kane, yeah and out who, who has a guest a legendary yeah. guest was that against I, junior no that was against for uh um a Verdum, okay Verdum, Verdum, yeah but is that's a real thing that that altitude training. yeah no, i feel like in singapore it wasn't because it's like an island so it's still like low like it's like low to the oh. coast, i guess um and i feel like my first training session there i literally slept like the entire time on the plane so i was like ready to go yeah. did you really i was gonna ask you that because i'm such a shit flyer you able to sleep on a plane yeah i actually i'm pretty good at sleeping on planes i feel like i'm almost like a baby with that like i any if i'm like in a car or, like in a plane anything that's moving i just like pass out yeah you're lucky that's a gift to be able to do that because i mean <laughs> like you 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 just I, I wind up staying awake the entire flight and I get off and I don't sleep what? in the hotel. I, I don't know, man. I, I, I'm a bad nervous? sleeper. You're nervous? Yeah. It's nervous, but it's also uncomfortable. I just, uh, I just don't like it. Shitty air. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, Erin, enough of all this MMA stuff. Let me ask you. The people want to know. Mm -hmm. what If you're reading a book, if you're streaming a series, tell us. Tell us something you're doing on an off day and I don't want to hear about the active rest where you're running up a hill or something, walking up a hill. What do you like to do? Give us a hobby. It could be something you're watching. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. I feel like one hobby I have, I always love going to like coffee shops. I'll try like all different coffee shops or like, I'm a big like foodie, like after fights, I have like a whole list of like different places in like Hoboken or like the city that I'll like want to try and go out to. Like what yeah. is it food that you haven't, had before or is it something like oh i always wanted to try that it's both i feel like it's sometimes food i've never tried before or a lot of times it's i feel like when i'm in camp like obviously you have like cravings for things that you can't have so it'll be like places of something i know I, I would love um so yeah i feel like it's all different kind of things i have like a note app on like a, of a whole list of stuff on my phone how much time do you give yourself because here's the thing i'll do that too i'll say okay i'm going to give myself a saturday but then it turns into seven months of just shoving my face into a bag of food. How long do you give yourself after a fight to go, all right, I'm gonna kind of pig out and do what I want and then stop? Yeah, so I feel like uh, the first week, I usually kind of like, I'm pretty lax and I'll let myself have what I want. Um, but even with like my foodie things, like 
I'll go out and have like good things. But when I'm home, like I try to make like healthier things, you know, so it's only like when I'm going out that I'll have, I guess, like the like, be- like worse food. Um, but it's all like a balance, you know, it's like especially when you're not in camp, um, you kind of just have to find that balance between like eating healthy and treating yourself. What's an automatic cheat for you? Like, you know, as soon as you're done, this is what you're having. There's got to be one thing every time that you're like, this is what I my go to. Oh, you know, I love I love anything chocolate. So I'm a big like Reese's family. I remember after one of my fights, I got like one of those like half pound Reese's and I like almost like smashed the whole thing. Yeah, it's nice. Like, I'm not, yeah, if you're it's sweets or food, if you have to go one or the yeah. other, which, which do you like, which is more of your thing? I feel like I, I, I like sweets. I think especially like after a fight, I think because I haven't like I've had a lot of like regular food. I think yeah. I'm always craving sweets. And it's like something to reward yourself. Doesn't Max Holloway, it wasn't it for him, it was cupcakes. Cupcake, it's just like yeah. whatever, it's just this weird thing that you just kind of keep on the back burner. Like, all right, when I'm done, I can have that. And it really does help you not do it when you're not supposed to. If you know you're going to give yourself a week or four days of, you know, doing what you want, it kind of helps you not do it when you shouldn't. Yeah, yeah, I think it definitely does. I feel like everyone kind of has like their thing that they're always dreaming about for after their fight. <laughs> What do you hate the most in training? What is the what is the part of it that you dread the most? Um, yeah, I feel like I genuinely uh, enjoy like all my training sessions. Maybe like when I'm in camp, like I don't always want to do like the extra cardio, like extra runs and stuff like that. Um, but I don't know if I necessarily dread them. I think cutting weight's probably like one of the hardest things, like not being able to like eat what you want, you know. Can I can I tell you? Since I got when I don't when was my last fight? I don't even know. I was I'm 49 now. It was 36. Since then, and I've yeah. been around them. I have not touched a Versa climber, and I never oh, will. Yeah. <laughs> I will never touch a goddamn Versa climber again <laughs> in my life. And I'm proud. I I there's no need. I can stay yeah. in shape jujitsu. Mm-hmm. I I don't have any memories of uh Anything probably worse, even sparring sessions. I hated that damn thing. Do you ever work with those versa climbers? I haven't really. I do a lot of um, assault bike like sprints, but I don't have one of the versa climbers in my in my gym. I have to try it. It's I, rough I, when you have you know, someone keeping you at a certain steps and stuff like that. It's rough. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. I remember. What kind of workout cool. would you do with it? Uh, a lot of times we do the um, interval um, uh, sprints on interval, so thirty seconds. Okay. Um, slow, long, then 30 seconds. Bah, 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 bah. Uh, then, but then you do that for the fight. So it's like, yeah. you're going, so you, it's, it's fucking insane. Oof. I just, I still remember it. It's been so, eight, much, <laughs> so long ago, but I very I rarely, got, I very rarely got tired in my fights. You know, you yeah, need, yeah. you need to have a coach that knows how to push you to the point where you're kind of cursing them, but you know, they're doing it, you know, but not too much where you're just defeated. You know what I mean? You, mm-hmm. yeah, that would be important to have that, uh, Aaron, like as a cardio coach. I don't know, how uh, that. yeah, yeah. I feel like I, a lot of my cardio sessions I, I do, uh, either like on my own or with um, like a training mm-hmm. partner or something. I feel like cardio's never necessarily been something I had a struggle with. It's just I, I usually just do extra cardio just for like uh, getting the weight off and stuff like that. Um, but I, I feel like I've been pretty blessed with, with good cardio, <laughs> that's a oh. thing. That I is hate thing. it yeah. so much. It really is. Yeah. And there's some people that just don't get tired and they're nightmares. Like, I, like I, I hate moving when I don't want to move so much. And that Versa Climber, I've never had to work out because I don't fight. But I've just done yeah. it. I've had like a trainer in the gym say, do it. And it's like, fat, fat. Yeah. Oh, in that I'm case, it's finished. okay. It I'll do that. sucks. Yeah. I'll do that all day long. All right. Hey, Jimmy, I don't want to keep Aaron all day. It's, it's yes, fun. and I have a hello for you, by the way. I forgot uh, Professor Mike over at Henzo's. Uh, I saw him today, uh, said to say hello to you. And, uh, you know, he's, he's, you know, wanted me to say hi to you. And then he, uh, oh, yeah, that's awesome. Tell him I said hi too. I will. I'll see him on Wednesday. Yeah. Well, Aaron, we can't wait. When you have something, the, the next, uh, I mean, what's going on now? What is next for you? I mean, do we know? Anyone? Um, I'm, I'm not completely sure. I feel like we need to see how, uh, the Valentina and Grasso fight plays out oh. and then I have a better idea. Yeah. Now, how do you feel that's going to play out? You know, I, I'm not really sure. You know, I feel like 
feel like I could see either girl. Like, I feel like Alexa is a really great game planner. I think that's what helped her win that last fight. Like, she she knew Valentina was going to throw that spinning back kick, and she had an answer for it. Um, but I feel like if Valentina adjusts a little bit, she was already winning that first fight. So if she just adjusts, makes maybe a couple different uh, decisions, she could win the second fight. Um, I don't know. I feel like they're, they're pretty even. I, I'm curious to see how it goes. Do you have a preference? I know I'm sure you feel confident and have ideas for both. Yeah. One, not who you'd, it's hard to say who you'd rather fight because it makes it look like you don't want to fight the other one. But do you feel yeah. you match up better with either one, particularly? Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think so. I think they both bring their own, um, like strengths and weaknesses, you know? Um, I think it's just kind of more like depending on who wins depends will like kind of dictate what happens in the division. Like I feel like if Valentina wins, maybe they fight again for like a trilogy and then, then it'd probably leave me and Manon to fight versus if Alexa wins, then I feel like it'd be hopefully I can just get the title shot next. You know what I mean? So I feel like it kind of depends on what happens. I feel like if Valentina Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, and if Valentina wins too, I think it depends on how she wins. Like if she comes yeah. in and, and it's a very dominant win, then people go, all right, Valentina, uh, there may not be a trilogy, but if it's a close fight, yeah. And then maybe you and Manon fight, but that's, it's, I, I know you'd probably like to avoid that if you could. And if you're going to fight her, you'd probably rather fight her as a champion. Yeah. You, you know, um, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, so, I'm confident in my abilities to beat all of them. So Cool. If I have to fight one more time before the title, that's fine. Sure. If I get a title shot next, obviously that'd be that'd be ideal. But whatever happens, I'll get that title soon. And watching that fight with Manon the other day, we talked mm -hmm. about how tough Rose is, the finger injury. You know, did you see? Not to get specific, after watching that, you and your coaches, anything that's glaring that like, ooh, I hope she does that with me, type of thing, or is there something where you're like? I see certain things that I could exploit when I fight her. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like when she fights me, obviously she's going to try to keep her range um, and, and not engage in any type of like wrestling or jitsu. Um, but I mean, I know I can close my distance better than like Rose is doing. Rose is kind of shooting from pretty far. I feel like with my setups and with my wrestling. Yeah. That's, it'll be my fight all day. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Aaron, thanks for coming on. And uh, hopefully you get a shot at that title very, very soon. We'll see what happens uh, you know, at the end of September, how that uh, second fight between them works out. And if not, you'll fight Manon, and that'll be a great fight too. Whatever you do, we'll, I'm sure you'll get a title shot soon. Yeah, I'm sure. Thank you. And great talking Aaron, to you. Aaron, uh, hold yeah, on. you anything too. to plug, though, buddy? Anything that you want to plug? Um, yeah, any of my social media. Um, uh, it's Blanchfield underscore MMA. You can see everything I'm doing there. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for Thank you, Aaron. Me. Great talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. You too. Bye, guys. Very nice of her to come on. Like you said, Matt, during the holiday. Yes, Jimmy. Um, very, very nice uh, of, her, of her to come on. And, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Hey, very nice of uh, you to hang out with me and me and Matt, you. Matt, it's my pleasure. We have so much fun, Jimmy. I miss you. Always. I see you person soon. Yeah, let's do that, man. I, I really do want to come out and see you. Uh, Again, I just went hey, back today for the first time in a week what? and a half, so I'm rusty. Okay. If anything, dude, I can bring the wife in. We go out to eat and stuff again. You know, we'll do something. We'll talk. Uh, that'd be really Let fun. Yeah, like maybe on a Friday. Do you ever come out on a Friday? Let me know, man. I could just have my in-laws watch my kids. Yeah, yeah, you know, we'll do we'll it on do Friday because I, I would, uh, yeah, I would like that a lot. That'd be fun. Man. It'd be great to see you guys. Oh. Hey, man. Jimmy, thanks, man. Have a great day. You and, too. Uh, I had fun. And I want to plug uh, uh, Dana White Contender Series uh, is going to be. Uh, oh, and, and, and Cannoneer and Curtis are on with us. Uh, of course, uh, it, it, it's it's on this uh, Tuesday, Dana White Contender Series. And uh, Jared oh, Cannoneer and Cannonier Curtis. And Chris Curtis are on the next show? Yeah, to promote. Uh, we're going to talk about Adesanya Strickland. Uh, very interesting fight. I'm happy for Sean that he's getting that, that shot. Um, mm. I like I think I like I like Sean Strickland. I like sure, that, love him. I like that people are different, and and I've dealt with him one on one. I've in, in person. I've talked to him, and he's always been very cool. So I like him. People are lucky he fights professionally because oh, Sean no, no, Strickland no. is a guy that would throw people through windows in real life, and the fact that he's fighting professionally keeps him from probably doing a lot of 
very, very dangerous thing. So people, should, if anyone that gives him shit should be happy he's fighting professionally. Oh, he 100% walks the line of a psychopath, but he's a, <laughs> a, 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 a man. All right, listen. Jimmy, <laughs> I do <funny>. like <laughs> uh, Oh, but yeah. Oh, listen, Jake. Oh, Curtis is good friends with Strickland, too. Yes, yes. I can hear for both guys. Yes. Oh, that's fun. Oh, I can't wait for next show, Jimmy. Me neither, can't buddy. come soon enough. Thank you, Aaron. And uh, we'll uh, talk to you in a couple of days. Bye, buddy. Bye, pal. <laughs>